Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. And today I'm going to show you you can convert your Playwright tests to Playwright and Rack and Roll and or Spec Flow tests as the runner. I'm saying Rack and Roll and or Spec Flow because this approach will work for both, both converting just Playwright to Spec Flow or play, Playwright to Rack and Roll. I personally recommend Rack and Roll now just because that's what looks like is going to be kept up to a date and maintained. Whereas Specflow hasn't had a release for a good year or so now. Let's get into this. So I just want to show you, first of all, the test runs and works. All it's doing is going to commit quality, entering the username, password, logging in and making sure that we see the logout button. Perfect. But at the moment, this is all using just Playwright. The first thing I'd suggest you want to do is go to extensions, go manage extensions, search online here and search for either Rack and Roll or Specflow depending which one you use. I have Reckon already installed, but there'd be like an install button here. Click install or download and it'll, um, it'll do everything for you. You have to close Visual Studio and then reopen and it'll all be working as expected. I think I have Specflow as well. Yes, there we are. I've got both, depending on which tool you want to use. Just select either one of them. Like I said, I'd recommend maybe going with Rack and Roll just so things keep up to date. Once you've done that, you want to then go to Tools, Manage NuGet package, manage NuGet package for the solution. I'm going to show you the two different ones, one for Rack and Roll and one for, for Specflow. I'm going to type in Rack and Roll first. So this is the first one we'll go to. Let's go to Browse. And I'm going to look for the adapter that I want to use. So because I'm using Playwright with MS Test, I'm using, I'm going to search for Rack and Roll MS Test. But if you use an X unit or N unit, you select these ones. So in my case, I'm going to say install on this, accept, let that do everything. So once it's installed, you'll see it here and version 1.01, .01, which is the latest version when I've created this video. But like I said, if you want to use Specflow, just search for Specflow and you can see there's specflow.ms test. And there'll be a same thing if I just search for Specflow dot, you'll see there's also versions for N unit and X unit here so you can install whatever one you want. Awesome, so with the packages installed, we're now in a position where we could start writing our feature files. So I'm gonna say, add new folder, and I'm gonna say features, just cause I wanna keep them all inside here. And inside here, I'm gonna do right click, add new item. And because you've installed the extension, you should see some rack and roll and spec flow templates. Like I said, I'm going to use Rack and Roll, but it'd be the same process with Specflow. And I'm going to say, uh, let's just name this example. So this then is the base templates that's, that gets created. So you can change the feature name to whatever you want. Really, we should have probably named it something like login functionality. But then you can say, as a user of commit quality, I would want to subscribe to the channel so I can become the best QA ever known. Just a little plug there to make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all future videos. But here we've got tags, useful when you've got a bunch of things, but right now we don't need them too much. Let's just remove that. Change the scenario name so I could say um, basic login. And now I'll say given I go to the commit quality login page when I enter credentials to log in. Then I should see the logout button. Perfect. So that's my Gherkin. Could be improved. But essentially what we're going to do is a step to go to the login page, another one to actually log in, and then this is going to be our assertion. So looking at our test, here's our given, which is our setup. Here's our when, which is our actions, and here's our then, which is our assertions. So I'm going to create another file just to keep them separate. But like I say, you can put these, you can organize this however you want. I'm going to name these steps. And now then I can create, like, and now I can create a step file, which will make use of these actions. Let's just build this. And now you can see that the, the actions are not defined. They've kind of gone this purpley color. So what I can say is define steps. And tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to create the file. So here you've got example step definitions. I want them inside steps. Let's just move it here. 
And here we've got kind of the example set up where you've got our given, our when, and our then, which is where the code is going to go. But before we do that, we need to add a few things. The first thing is obviously we want to access the page that we get the browser that we're going to be using from playwright. So let's say private read only I page. I will call that underscore page. Let's set up the constructor as well. So um, we'll say public example step definitions I page of page. And then we want to say that our property page is equal to page from playwright. And now we're in a position then to actually use the code we already had. So let's take this. I'm going to take it all and we'll just cut it as we need to go. So example step definitions, let's put it all in the given at the moment. So I'm going to say await underscore page, go to async commit quality. Of course, this is all red at the moment as well, because we this method has been generated as public void, but this is actually a task, an asynchronous task to be precise. So if I say public async task, now you can see this is working. We'll get rid of this code. So that's our given, go into the login. Now we want our when, which once again is gonna be async task. Here, we wanna change page to underscore page. So we've got our when set up there. And finally, we've got the then, which we'll say async task. And what we're expecting, which we see here, is once I change that, this expect is going to be read. And it's because it doesn't know what expect is. So it doesn't know where it's coming from. So what we can actually say is we can say assertions dot expect, which will then work perfectly fine. Or so you think it's all going to work fine, but actually, we have a bit more setup we need to do because what Playwright does under the hood is set everything up for us, as in it sets up our browser context so we can actually use this page object. And just to kind of prove what I'm saying, and just to prove this, let's build the solution. Let's run this. And we should see a failure which there we are, interface cannot be resolved because we haven't actually set anything up yet. So let's go into doing that. So let's say hooks and inside hooks, let's create a new file. We've got a rec and roll hooks file there. So we'll name hooks.cs. And here we've got a bunch of stuff. You've got the before scenario, the after scenario with a bunch of different things you can do, but I'm gonna get rid of all of this We'll keep the before scenario, but we don't need it with any tags. And we actually want to create a constructor here as well. So let's say public hooks. Inside here, we want to say I object container. And we'll name that object container. And we want to have the scenario context. So we'll say scenario context of scenario context, which of course need to be properties defined above as well. So. So inside this class, I'm actually going to say private read only I object container underscore object, oh, no capitals, object container. And we want another one, which is private read only scenario context of underscore scenario context which if we get rid of this and inside here then let's say underscore object container equals object container and underscore scenario context equals scenario context that's just setting everything up for us and now we want to actually do this before scenario so it's going to be an asynchronous task so we'll name this uh setup playwright and inside here then, let's say uh, var pw for playwright, you can name this something better, but it doesn't really matter. Await playwright.create async. And this is just saying, create us a driver that's ready to be used. We then also need to create a browser. So we'll say var browser equals await uh, pw dot chromium. Let's use chromium launch async uh, with a new browser type launch options and let's set headless to be false. 
so we can see what's actually going on. So if you need to update it, this is where you can update it. We then want to set up a new browser context. So say browser context equals await browser dot new context async, which will have new a new object of browser new context options. There we are. I'm actually going to add in an argument here as well, which is going to be the bypass CSP equals true. Because I've had problems with this in the past. I'm going to keep it in, but this just bypasses the page's content security policy. It'd probably be fine, but I'm, I'm going to add it in. And now we want to say our oh, page. Let's say page await browser context to be a new page. And we want to use that object container now to register everything. So we'll say object container register instance as browser. And we want to do the same for the page. With that set up now, we have all the kind of default stuff that Playwright would have set up for us if we were using their test runner. But now then, let's build, let's run and see if we have any luck. Here we are, it loaded, it run. Um, let me put some breakpoints in because that was very quick for you to see. So tell you what, I'll do it on each step as well. Probably another go-to, there's no point on that, but I'll do it here and I'll do it on the when and then. So if we debug this. There we are, it stopped and it's gone to the login page. We know how given, how setup has actually worked. If I step through this what we should see is enter username entered password entered login is clicked and we'll be taken back to the computers page so go through let's reopen that there we are we've got the logout button visible now and if we click continue we'll see that it passed like it did before with the assertion all working as expected so there we are that's how you set up wreck and roll with playwright or spec flow with playwright the steps are exactly the same now i have also thought about doing a similar video but doing it with converting it to a page object model as well. So if you think you would find it useful converting Playwright page object model to Playwright with spec and flow, spec flow or Playwright with rec and roll and page object model, drop a comment down below. As always, a like and subscribe is appreciated. I have enabled super thanks. If you do, if you do want to help contribute to the running of my channel and my website, you can do that. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good day.